The Clubhouse app has been all the buzz lately, but what is Clubhouse and should you be on it? Spoiler. Yes, you should. Are you curious on how to get started with Clubhouse? Maybe you wanna know how to use the Clubhouse app. I'm gonna tell you all of that and more and why I think Clubhouse app is the best social networking app we've ever had. Hey friends, I'm Tasia and welcome back to my YouTube channel where I share tech tips and app reviews. As we get started today, go ahead and give this video a like if it is providing value to you. It really does signal YouTube that this is indeed the content you are looking for. And speaking of the content you're looking for, we have so much to talk about today when it comes to Clubhouse. We are going to do a deep dive into the Clubhouse app, including a full tutorial for you. So come on, we have a lot to do, let's go. Because we have a lot to cover, some structure might be helpful. So I've got a whole bunch of chapters listed below if you wanna skip around to any of those specific sections. So let's first discover what is Clubhouse and why you may want to be on it. How do you use Clubhouse? What are some of the best features and best practices that I've learned along the way? And finally, if you just can't take it anymore and you need to get an invite into Clubhouse, Let's have a chat a little bit later because I want to get you an invite to Clubhouse. So first things first, what the heck is the Clubhouse app? In short, it's a live audio app. But I like to say it's like if you took a live conference and a podcast, you threw them in a bowl together, you mix them all up, and you threw it in the app. It's brilliant. You can go into rooms and listen to other users speak about a variety of topics. And when I say variety, I mean variety, like as in literally anything and everything. But you can also take the stage and interact with the speakers. Plus it is just a great way to meet people and connect with them from all over the world. This is one of the reasons I think Clubhouse is one of the best social networking apps in the world. When I say social networking, I don't mean social networks like in their traditional sense, like Twitter and Facebook. I mean actual connecting, actual networking, like you would do at a live event, except it's in the app and it's with all like-minded people in your industry. So you're in your rooms here and you're listening to great speakers, you're asking some Q and A's, and then like all good things, the room must come to an end. One of the craziest things about this app is that once the room is over, that's it. Finito, it's gone, there is no recording. This is of course quite strategic on the part of Clubhouse to create major FOMO amongst users because if you're not in that room when that cool person is speaking, too bad, you missed it, it's over, she done. The last thing you need to know about Clubhouse is that it is still in beta. So it's currently invite only and only available for iPad and iPhone. Now, we will chat a little bit later about a little invite hack I have for you. And don't fret if you are on Android, it is coming soon. So now that you know what Clubhouse is, let's dive into how to use Clubhouse. Consider this your full Clubhouse tutorial. There's actually quite a few important things you want to know when it comes to how to use the app. You know, things like terminology, the layout of the app, how the algorithm actually works so you can get the most out of Clubhouse. Now, the main screen of the app is what's known as the hallway. Now, everybody's hallway is going to look a little bit different. It's based on your interests and clubs and people that you follow. I'll get into that a little bit later, but this is really a snapshot of how the algorithm is working for you. You're gonna notice that the hallway here is a place where, down at the bottom, you can start a room of your own. But we're not ready for that quite yet. First, we wanna understand what the heck a room is and what goes on in there. A room on Clubhouse is just like you would find if you were at a conference and you physically stepped into a room to listen to a speaker. There could be one person on the stage, there could be multiple people on the stage. The same exact thing can be said for Clubhouse. So when you enter a room on Clubhouse, there will be a person or persons on the stage. And that simply means they're going to appear at the top of your room here. So at the top section of your screen. Underneath the people on the stage will be the section of users that the speakers follow. 
And then underneath those is everybody else. Rooms are really the cornerstone of Clubhouse. And here's why. Think about how much money you would spend to go to a conference and listen to the best people in your industry speak. That's literally Clubhouse. It is all right here at your fingertips for free. I've been part of some mind blowing killer rooms with some of the best YouTubers in the industry where they answered my questions willingly and lovingly for free. Where else in the world are you going to get connected with the best minds in your industry and you get to pick their brains? Did I mention for free? Where else in the world? Nowhere. Clubhouse is where. So if you find yourself in a room you don't like, you can click the leave quietly option here at the bottom and then just kind of crab walk your way out of the room. But let's say you love what's being discussed in the room and you wanna tell your friend to get her took us into that room immediately. You can do that too. So here on the bottom, if you tap the plus symbol, that's gonna allow you to ping a follower into the room that you are in. So that person's gonna get a notification that you want them to join the room. Now there's also this hand icon in the bottom of the room, and this is the button you tap if you wanna ask a question or chat with the people on stage. The moderator of the room will be notified that you wanna come up to the stage and they can bring you up if they so desire. And I'll share a little bit more on moderating a little bit later on. Some other handy things about the rooms are that if you're brought up to the stage, your microphone is automatically unmuted. So you're gonna wanna tap the microphone button in the bottom right to mute yourself right away when you get up to the stage. Also, since it's not a great user experience to just everybody be talking over everybody, something cool that Clubhousers, is that a term? It is now, <laughs> will tap their mic in fast succession on and off like this to show the speaker that what they are hearing, they like. It's kind of like a visual applause cue. Another awesome feature of rooms is that you can easily learn more about anybody in the room with just a tap on their little icon. You'll be shown a snapshot of their bio. You can swipe up on their bio or click view full profile to see how many followers they have and how many people they are following. As an aside, who you follow is very important. And I'm gonna touch on that a little bit later, but it really can make or break your clubhouse experience. But first, back to the bios. You will notice a little bell icon and then whether or not you're following the person. And then there's some little stars. Now this bell icon is really important because you're gonna be notified when a person you follow takes the stage or schedule an event. And sometimes this can get overwhelming if the person you follow like takes the stage all the time. You might get so many notifications. So this is where you would set those specific notifications per person. Now these little stars here on the right of the profile, this is going to show you recommendations. So if you like this person and the industry that they're in, you can just tap on those little stars and now you're going to have a quick glance of similar people that you can follow. Now below all of that, you're gonna be able to read a little bit more about the person and as well as some links to their Twitter and Instagram accounts. And I interrupt this message to bring you yet another important tip for you guys. There is no in-app DMs within the Clubhouse app, okay? So you have to connect with people outside of the app, meaning via their Twitter or Instagram account. So it is crucial that when you guys are building out your bios, you add your Twitter and Insta accounts to really get the most out of this networking app. So at the very bottom of a user profile, you may see some clubs that this person is a member of. And that quite literally brings us into clubs on Clubhouse. There's a lot to know here about clubs, but mainly clubs create their own content and you can have both members and followers of specific clubs. Now, if you click on a club, we'll just use at the bottom of the profile here, you're gonna see all the members of the club with the first person listed being the founder of the club. 
Now I could go on all day about clubs because there are so many and they cover, I mean, pretty much anything you could dream of. You can follow clubs you're interested in and you can hopefully become members of clubs and also apply to have your own clubs. Now, if you're liking this tutorial so far, be sure to give this video a like. It really does help the YouTube algorithm. And speaking of algorithms, remember earlier when I briefly mentioned the algorithm when we were talking about the hallway and you might remember I mentioned who you follow is really important. Let's get into that because this is really going to make your user experience the best it can be on Clubhouse if you understand the algorithm. The number one most important thing for you to remember as a clubhouser is that you control your own experience on the app. You are the purveyor of your own destiny or something like that. But here's why this is crucial to know off the bat. The entire clubhouse algorithm is based on people you follow, topics you're interested in, clubs you follow, clubs that you are a member of. This all signals Clubhouse to what you are interested in and what you think you wanna learn about. So it's really important to understand that. If you're just following people for the sake of following them, you're probably gonna start getting pinged into all these rooms that aren't gonna be a reflection of things you like, and you're probably not gonna care about these things that people are talking about in these rooms. So you might keep getting notifications for rooms you're not interested in. And worse yet, you could wind up in a room about, I don't know, cooking frog legs for an example, and wonder what you did wrong in your life to end up in this moment, in this time, right now, in a room you cannot control. So if you take anything away from this video, let it be this. Ensure you are tailoring your experience the way you like it. And the easiest way to do that is using the explore feature. If you tap on the magnifying glass icon, you're gonna be taken to the Explore page. Currently, you can only search for people and clubs here, but under the search bar are people you either may know or people the app thinks you might be interested in based on the all important algorithm. Now underneath that is essentially another search directory for people and clubs. So if you are interested in, let's say sports, you'll now be able to break it down per topic. And since for some reason they don't have hockey, like what even is that about? I will pick basketball as an example. And now you're gonna see all the people that are interested in that topic, as well as all the clubs you might wanna follow that are related to that topic. This is gonna be crucial in order to tell Clubhouse how to curate your hallway that's filled with your actual interests. But you can tailor your interests even further by tapping on the settings gear in the top right of your profile. Now here, the second option from the top, you're gonna to have everything you've told Clubhouse you are interested in. If you tap on interests, here you can continue to refine those interests as they change over time. Okay, now as promised, let's talk about starting a room and scheduling events. We remember from our hallway, you can tap here to start a room and you're gonna have a few options here if you do so. You can add a topic to your room from here, which is where you add a description of your room, which by the way, you can edit this description before you start a room, but not after the room has started. Now underneath that, you can start an open room, which means it's a public room, so anyone on the app can find it and join the room. You can start a social room, which means it's only a room for the people within your social network, so like those that are following you. And then you have this option to start a closed room, which is a completely private room between you and anyone you add to the room. Starting a closed room can be a really great way to learn how to moderate a room without the pressure of it being public. But Tasia, what the heck is moderating a room? Don't worry, dear friend, here's everything you need to know about moderating a room. Automatically, when you start a room, you are the moderator of that room. The same thing applies to scheduling an event, which I will talk about next. I like to have co-mods or someone or a couple of people to moderate a room with. This is gonna be really handy if you need to dip out, say get back to life because Clubhouse can be a time suck in the best way, but that way they're gonna be able to continue on the room if you have to leave. Another important tip, make sure that you are making somebody you trust 
a moderator with you, the last thing you would want is for someone to hijack your room from you. Believe it or not, it's happened. And that's because all moderators have the same full room controls. Moderators are given a little green asterisk next to their names. As a moderator, you can make anyone else in a room a moderator, and you can bring anyone else up to the stage for a chat. You can mute people as they come to the stage if they don't mute themselves. And another key element of being a moderator is the ability to move a person back to the audience. So if you wanna clear a way out for other people to come on up to the stage, that's really handy. Now mods can also turn on or off the hand raising function in a room. Now, if you don't wanna start a room on the fly, you have the option of scheduling an event. Now, don't get confused. Essentially, rooms and events are the same thing. So from your hallway, click on the calendar icon at the top. Here are all the upcoming events tailored to you via the algorithm. These are events that have started within the last hour or are coming up. If you're scrolling and you don't see anything of interest, you can use the toggle at the top to see all events coming up. If you come across an event you're interested in, you can either join what's happening in progress or you can tap on the event and set that bell notification or you can share it outside of the app. But to actually schedule an event of your own, you're gonna to need to click on that little calendar icon with the plus symbol in the top right corner. Now here you're gonna enter the event name. And this is where you could add your co-host or your guests as well. You're gonna pick a date and time that works for you. Then if you are a member of a club and you want the room to be under that club umbrella, you can add that here too. And just as important as the title is this event description. You have 200 characters to describe what you're gonna be chatting about in your room. Hot tip, emojis, super popular on Clubhouse. Once you click publish, your room is now scheduled. And back in the events tab, you can toggle at the top to view my events to quickly get back to your scheduled room. Now it's also important to find who is currently active on the app at the same time as you, or you know, you might be familiar with like who's online now. And you can do that here too. So from that hallway, you can either tap this little grid with the green dot in the bottom right, or you can just swipe left to access all active clubs and users available to chat. Now, you'll not only be able to see who's online here, but you're also gonna see what room that user is in. The power here is that you can click on any of these profiles and go right into that room that that person is in, just like that. So I know I've been sprinkling in a few tips here and there along the way, but now we've come to the part where I wanna share even more tips with you. Let's call them power user tips. These are things I've learned on my time on the app and I think you might find extremely helpful too. So we're gonna to touch some more on bios and how they play a really important role on these search functionality within Clubhouse. And we'll also talk about some follower and notification tips. The user bio on Clubhouse is extremely important for a couple of reasons. First, it's really important that the first three lines of your bio are the catchiest. Think like the headline of a newspaper. You really wanna to get to the meat and potatoes of what you do and the industry that you're in. This is crucial to do in these first three lines because if you remember from here, anytime you're in a room, you can tap on a user profile and see a quick snapshot of that user. That snapshot is only those three lines. You wanna hook, line, and sync them into viewing your full profile, connecting with you on the app, and hopefully making that connection outside of the app as well. Within the top three lines of the bio, I would actually argue that this first line here is the most important because if someone searches for you or your industry in the explore section of the app, only the first line of your bio is displayed. And speaking of someone searching for you or your industry on the app, this is the second reason why your bio is super important. You wanna use relevant keywords 
in your bio. That way, if someone is searching for, let's say here, tech YouTuber or something like that, any user that has that in their bio has now come up in that search. So you want to be found in the industry you're working in and putting those keywords in your bio is going to help you do that. Plus, you're gonna be able to find like-minded people in your industry easily too. It's really important to only follow people and some clubs that you're interested in because that's how you're gonna signal the algorithm to curate your interests, regardless of whether or not somebody follows you back. In fact, Clubhouse will flag you and can ban you for a tempting follow for follow type behavior. So don't do it. Plus, it's not going to give you the best results in the algorithm. Another thing to keep in mind is setting your notifications properly. Now, I showed you how to do that a little bit to turn on notifications per individual user, but you might want to adjust them for the app as a whole. And I strongly recommend you do this or you could be overwhelmed with notifications. There could be thousands of rooms going on at any given time. And ain't nobody got time for that. So from your profile, click on the gear icon in the top right. This first section at the top is your notification section. This is where you can and should set your notification frequency to infrequent or very infrequent. So if you have a good memory, you may recall at the beginning of this video that was like, oh gosh, I don't know, a million years ago now, I mentioned that right now Clubhouse is invite only. But I do wanna show you a couple different ways to invite or add people to the app. And then I would like to share some invites with some of you. So at the top of your hallway, you will have a little envelope here. If you click that envelope, you will see how many invitations you have. And from here, you can send an invite out to anyone that is in your iPhone contact list. But wait, there's another way to let someone in without giving up an invite. If someone who is in your contact list downloads the app and reserves a username, you will get a notification that they are trying to get into the app. The notification will then ask you if you wanna let them in without using up an invite. And the cool thing is, gosh, how many cool things can I say there are about this app? But the cool thing is that anybody you invite or let into the app, you will be tied to their profile forever. Here's what it looks like. So on a user's profile page, you can see who nominated that user. So if you let someone in who ends up taking off on the app, you may organically see more growth in Clubhouse because everyone's going to be able to see that you're the one who nominated that user. With that said, if you aren't on Clubhouse yet, but you want to be, let me know in the comments below that you want an invite. And if I have invites to give, consider them yours. If you're on iOS, maybe comment below something like, I want an invite, and then I'll do my best to get you into the app. And this concludes our 75 hour long Clubhouse tutorial. If you are watching this part, ooh, God bless you. Now I wanna hear from you. Did you find this video helpful? And do you want an invite to Clubhouse? Let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, I wanna know. So give it a like, a share, or leave that comment below. You can click right about here to subscribe to my channel and up here for another video. Thanks so much for watching guys. We'll see you next time. Time.